October, the month of Halloween, ghouls and ghosts may be over. But in November, it's time to talk about something even more terrifying than the paranormal, human beings. On today's video, I am finally going to be talking about the people who thought that Digimon were real. It's Project Digiclips. Hey, come on! Project Digiclips. Just what is it about? Project Digiclips is the combination of hope, belief, and the theories of members of all Digimon believers. The point is, we believe that Digimon exist, and we are determined to find a way to bring them to us. The way we attempt to do this is simple, yet hopefully effective. We gather all the believers that we can find and focus on our goal at the exact same moment all around the world. Hold our Digivices to the sky, and the laws of mind over matter tell us that we can achieve our goal. A digital portal opening somewhere nearby. Yep, that's right, Digi-truthers. <laughs> I've wanted to make this video for a while, and initially it was going to be a huge deep dive into every possible thing I could find about Digiclips, but uh, first of all, that video is kind of out there. There's a video on Digiclips by a YouTuber called Sudiam, who I encourage you to go and check out, and they went into more of a chronological unveiling of events. Obviously, the Digiclips forums in their entirety have now been lost to the ravages of time, and we only have rehosts, copy pastes, and certain parts of the forums left, as well as a very charming instant. Encyclopedia Dramatica entry. I'm so scared I'm gonna get a page of my own one day. But here's something that I've never admitted, at least on YouTube, but I have to my friends. I read the Project Digiclips forums. I was there, man. I was there. That's right. 2008. Khan would be surfing around the internet looking for all kinds of Digimon factoids and information. I was obsessed with behind the scenes stuff for a while. I still kind of am. Finding interviews, things about seasons, about movies, how they were made. I would just constantly Google how things were made, how things were done. And one day I fell down a rabbit hole trying to find out about uh, the real creators of Digimon or something like that, and instead found people who thought Digimon were real. But why is it called Project Digiclips? It doesn't really explain in the initial post, but 2009 and 2008 were both subject to upcoming lunar and solar eclipses. Project Digiclips believe if you hold up your Digivice, or as later explained, a stuffed toy, any Digimon merch that you have a personal connection with, that during the eclipse will go to the digital world. <laughs> And I can tell you for a fact scrolling this forum that while maybe some people were not really into it, a lot of people were. There was a whole forum subcategory dedicated to Digimon partner spottings, with people claiming everything from a, a gust of wind made them realize that Kazemon was nearby to actually seeing Agumon in the fall leaves. And a lot of it was probably teenagers and young people role playing, pretending, and well, they acted like they really believed. It. They obviously didn't and was just a, a little bit of escapism, but you have to think some of them really did buy their own bullshit. As documented in a something awful forum post, you would also have digi scholars discussing the terrain and history of the digital world and what it might be like once we got there. One user commenting, I had a theory not too long ago that the digital world was parallel to our own in terms of land masses and oceans. In fact, I found that a lot of the continents described in the manga and anime can be related to real world countries. The continent of Folda, for example, is almost identical to Australia. And then we have this monster of a post. We have had a few weeks to prepare ourselves and globally we are now less than 24 hours away from when the mini digiclips is to occur. In these last few hours you must do your final preparations which include the gathering of any extra supplies, packing and the switching into clothing that will be suitable for your arrival. Getting real Heaven's Gate vibes. So remember to check and double check your bag before you leave. Once you're in the digital world, you will not be able to quickly go back and grab something. This will also be your last chance to make up your mind on whether you are going or not. Remember that when you leave, there is a risk you might never come back, and there is also a risk that while you are there, you will die. It is also heavily recommended that you get a good night's sleep as well as have a full but not stuffed stomach, as well as be fully hydrated. If you do not know when the mini digiclips will occur in your area, go to the proper forum, and please don't ask here. Once you have something packed and ready, keep it close to you. The last thing you you want is to leave and forget your bag which might turn out to be a fatal mistake. Better yet, put on whatever you want to bring with you as we do not know if the item has to be securely attached, strapped or tied to you or you can hold it in your hand and do this within the last 5 minutes before we hit zero hour. I myself have finally made up my mind and I've decided that I will join the team and will leave the event recording up to my computers and hope that only a theoretical communications link actually works. A hybrid satellite slash cellular phone. Good luck everyone and I hope that this works. And it went on from there with forum members saying 
younger people perhaps shouldn't go as they were risking their lives and so on and so forth. Including, I have come to question why people on this forum might believe in Digimon and the existence of the digital world. My own beliefs are clear. I cannot explain how I know, but I just do. I understand that I have been made differently, more detached and more distant from the petty falsity of everyday life, and more recently that I have been made like this to use my capabilities and intellect to further this cause. Project Digiclips answered something in my life. I had the ability and the drive, but not the cause. This is that cause and I follow it entirely. While you were kissing girls, I studied the Digimon. <laughs> And again, I don't mean to be mean to these people, a lot of them are either younger, possibly mentally unwell, or just didn't fit in with anyone and needed some kind of community to feel like they belonged to. There were also darker sides to Digiclips outside of just people LARPing that Digimon were real. Because of course, just like with every other element of Digimon fandom, the furries arrived. Now I like to make fun of furries, but generally most of them are okay, but some of them enter into the territory that genuinely disturbs me, that goes between sort of slight fetish straight into genuinely disturbing Kuro the Wolf shit that I do not stand for. But we have this wonderful post from Wikifur. You can see my initial ideas on the combination of Digiclips' wiki. This is a repo for my ideas on the more adult stuff that can't go onto the Digiclips wiki. What I seek out of this project is the combination of the beliefs of the Digiclips and RDB folks with the furry fandom. Furry, in my opinion, could plug directly into this, since Digimon also figure prominently in the furry fandom. I mean, is it possible that furries are themselves Digimon? Or can be? And why not? You already have other kin and otaku kin out there, and the furry fandom has mostly found its breadth of expression, connection, and development on the internet. Those of those who have that affinity to anthropomorphics and related subjects may not have such a problem with a furry digiclips. I hate the internet, I wish I never came here. But how would we define the digiclips in furry term? Surely it can't exist within the child-friendly pigeonhole that the digiclips forum folks seek to maintain on their forums. Yes there will be sex, death, a lot of it determinedly inflicted, and drugs in the digital world. Ow the edge! To avoid that is stupid and futile in my opinion. Embracing a more realistic concept of the digital world and its inhabitants is something that I think those who are both furry and embracing of the idea that the digital world exists must do. I think that exploring the idea of furry digiclips, or furries as real Digimon or Digikin, should be explored. It could be proved to be exciting, at least to explore alternate takes on the furry existence. We get it, you want a shag Renamon. But it wasn't just furries ruining Digiclips. I can't believe that's a sentence I can say. <laughs> of course, as with every silly, weird community on the internet at that time, the hacker known as 4chan was on the case. The original Digiclips forum got raided to death and then a new one came back in its place. The new site requiring a full sign-up page and questionnaire as to why you wanted to be on the forum, but Again, trolls will go as far as they need to to get whatever they want, so you're not gonna keep them out with a questionnaire. It's really easy to fake that kind of thing. Also, you didn't even have to do the questionnaire to actually see the forum, just to post, so you could still get all your lol cow stuff from the forums without having to actually interact with the Digiclipses. And the raids kept happening. A second raid in July of 2008 happened with an intense level of racial slurs and other things that are just... Yeah, the kind of stuff you see every day in the 2008 internet. And finally at 3am on the 10th of July, the website was once again not just raided, but hacked. Digiclips' entire site was replaced with a comic which unfortunately has been lost to time, although I presume is some kind of epic 2008 Meimei. And by 2009, the entirety of Project Digiclips was a memory, a data scattered to the winds. And so ends a small but not insignificant portion of internet history. I've heard allegations that moderators and forum admins were using Digiclips to prey on younger forum members, which does not surprise me because anyone in that position in those kinds of weird fandoms generally turns out to be a creep. But more so than just insidiousness and trolling, Project Digiclips represents something truly magical. An era of the internet that is lost to us now with fact checking and believability. The era where other kin came to rise, the era where you weren't just on Twitter or Facebook or Tumblr, you were in dozens of Angel Fire web pages and people's own forums where whole communities would spring up 
over the love of one very specific thing. Now sure, you will have Toku Twitter, Digi Twitter, but everyone has disseminated interest. You don't get the kind of sheer lol cowrie that was the mid-2000s internet and things like Project Digiclips. As a veteran of the Digiclips forums, I can say that I have had no funnier a time as a Digimon fan, and while I don't mean to put anyone down, I, I do wonder where those Digiclips kids are today. You see, forget Ty, forget Davis, forget Takato. The kids who thought they saw Agumon in their back garden, they're my Digi destined. But that's it, thank you so much for watching, like the video, please subscribe, you can always unsubscribe if you don't like the content, like that, no skin off my back, but you know, you might see videos that you'd ordinarily miss. And leaving a comment is great for the algorithm, so let me know down below, do you have memories of Digiclips? Were you one of the four members? If you were, let me know what happened, I did have a couple of people tell me they were, but I didn't want to do a big Discord call crazy, like, you know, red wire connecting all the dots, but let me know your thoughts on Digiclips, or your experience with Digiclips if you have them. I'm super interested to hear if people do have the experiences with that website. And other than that, do you know any other weird Digimon things and Digimon fandom from the past? Let me know those in the comments down below. And until next time, I love you all. Thank you so much.